What's up everybody, this is Alex from Smooth Angler. We're gonna do a series on guide flies. If you don't know what guide flies are, this is definitely a channel to check out. Um, they're super simple to tie, uh, just flies that you can tie in a couple of minutes to 10, 15 minutes that you can fill your box quickly. Uh, and they also catch a ton of fish. So, grab your beers and let's get started. All right, so describing a couple of these boxes here, hopefully you can, you can see some of these flies. As I mentioned, a guide fly is something that's really easy to tie. A lot of trout streams in the area, uh, you'll find a ton of different types of bugs, midges, up to like larger terrestrials or stone flies. And in doing so, if you do a quick research of, let's say a stone fly nymph or a caddis nymph, fly pattern, you'll find 10, 15, 20, 30 different types of patterns uh, that you can tie. However, as a, either a beginning tire or even as an experienced tire like myself or other guides through Smooth Angler, uh, it just takes a ton of time. And what we want to try to do is try to limit the time at the vise to then increase the time on the water. Um, so we'll do a deep dive into the different flies in this box for trout. Um, I also have peep no pebble mine, but this is a streamer, a streamer box for bass and pike. We have a redfish, a redfish and sea trout, speckled sea trout um, box here. So we'll do some saltwater patterns in this series. And this is one of my new favorite toys. If you don't have one, definitely check out Fish Pond. Um, shout out to them, uh, but the sushi roll, and this is what I took on a recent trip to Martha's Vineyard for striper and false albacore. So all these are pretty much guide patterns that are things that are super simple to tie. Um, don't take a ton of materials, so don't worry about losing them in a tree or on a rock or things of that sort. Um, but they do the same thing as a as a fly that might take 30, 45 minutes to tie. Um, so keep checking us out. Uh, we'll go through a couple of different patterns that we'll cover in the series uh, more in depth and leave some comments below. So to a lot of anglers, this box for trout might look a little intimidating. And I only say that because there's a few hundred flies in here. Um, same thing with this box. So what we want to try to do is go through a couple of these different fly patterns and show you some ones that are extremely easy to tie. Um, that, that way you can fill up your box and catch some fish. So. If you see this fly here, similar to these down on the bottom, it's called a girdle bug. Uh, it imitates a stone fly. Uh, this is another stone fly pattern. Hopefully, you can see this. And we'll go. Whoops. We'll go into detail with some of these over time. But that's a stone fly pattern that is tied with some peacock and some different wraps of copper. Um, that's the same thing as this girdle bug. They imitate the exact same type of fly. And these are way easier to tie than a traditional stone fly nymph. Um, same with these little zebra midges. So if you see these zebra midges up top, a zebra midge might take two or three minutes to tie. Um, they fish great whenever you have midges in the water. 
Uh, you can get more complex and add a slight wing to it to make it look more like an emerger. Uh, you can add some different types of soft tackle. Uh, you can add a, like this one, let me see. If you can see, this one has a piece of flashaboo down the back. So you can get creative, but these zebra midges are a great example of a guide fly. You have some prince nymphs and some copper johns. Uh, those are good staples to have in your box, however they aren't extremely easy to tie. Now on the flip side, this is one of my all time favorites. It's called the Duracell. Hopefully you can see that. So it's called the Duracell, and it's just a couple of wraps of dubbing after you tied in a tail, and then some CDC soft tackle right before the bead head. So that's an, that's an excellent fly, ton of, of movement in the current, and extremely easy to tie. So we'll go through a couple of different uh, trout nymphs and trout streamers. Um, squirmy wormy, don't knock those out. Uh, but we'll go through a couple different trout, str trout nymphs that are what we consider guide flies, easy to tie, catch a ton of fish. If you look at trout dries, this is a dry box. Beetles are pretty easy to tie. Ants, pretty easy to tie. Now that's a lot different than like a parachute dry fly, um, an elk hair caddis. Some of these other dry flies here might be a little more complicated, like an Adams. Um, but some that are easier, if you look at hoppers, a stimulator, that's a hard fly to tie just to get the wraps um, correct. On the opposite side, one of, the, one of the best flies I've ever fished is called a chubby Chernobyl. These are easier to tie. So learning how to tie a chubby Chernobyl and fill in your box with something like this, and then either buying these, having a friend tie, uh, might be more productive for you. If we look at streamers, the same thing applies to streamers as it does to dry flies and nymphs. This is one of my favorite patterns. It's called the Crelex. The Crelex is simply a Clouser minnow tied with some uh, like flashaboo like fiber. Hopefully, you all can see that. You can knock these out extremely quickly. That's going to be a lot easier to tie than some of these soft tackle sculpting patterns or adaptations to a woolly bugger. Some of the streamers that we tie are also pretty easy. This is similar to a slump buster. Um, it's just a piece of rabbit fur, a couple of flash abuse strands, and some deer hair up top. Uh, you also put a cone head bead on the front. If you look on the bottom, there's some flash material in there. Um, so there's some couple ways that you can tie complex patterns in a very simplified manner. Then if we look at like bass and warm water fish, as I mentioned, I went on a recent uh, striper and false albacore trip. The best flies to tie period is a clouser minnow. So clouser minnow uh, is a staple for pretty much any fly fisherman to have in their box. Um, it imitates a lot of different bait fish patterns. They are extremely easy to tie. Um, a lot of individuals shy away from a clouser and try to tie extremely complex um, streamer patterns. Let's say like a, a Blaine Chocolate Game Changer um, or something like an EP minnow. Uh, clouser minnows do the same thing. They imitate the same type of, of bait fish that are in the waters, uh, but they take a tenth of the amount of time to tie. So if you're, so if you're thinking about tying one over the other, tie something simple that you can fill your box with 
um, then you can always supplement and buy uh, other types of flies. Um, this is a fly or guide fly here that I tie. It's just four materials. It's bucktail, some craft fur on top, some polar chenille um, on the on the um, where the gills are, and then just a CK bait fish brush and some eyes. Um, has great action. One of the things when tying guide flies is understand how a guide or how a fly moves in the water. Definitely streamers. Uh, you want a big head on the top. Uh, because in that way this slows down and this keeps going. What I mean by that is in the water, the way a game changer moves, um, like Blaine Chocolate has a great fly tire and he understands how water moves over a fly because with a big bulky head, it slows the fly down. So as this moves in the water, it moves forward, this slows down, this keeps going and that's how it kicks to the side. So it will give the motion of going back and forth through the water. All the super simple fly patterns that we're looking at. If you look at this epoxy surf candy, a surf candy fly takes around 10 to 15 minutes to tie. Because you have to layer the material and then build the epoxy head on top. This is a fly very similar to the Midnight Minnow that, that I tie. Um, it's three materials, so this is just a, a flash, pearl flash fiber in the back. This is palmer chenille and pearl. You have an eye, and then I add a fluorofiber throat. Um, you don't have to tie in the fluorofiber throat, which brings it down to even less materials. They look extremely similar in the water. You can tie it with different types of flash, um, and they take Two minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. This also applies to saltwater flies. So we look at this, this saltwater fly box. Uh, this is tailored towards redfish down in the low country of South Carolina and also North Carolina. This is a great fly pattern, extremely, extremely effective in the winter months. Um, it has, this is EP Sparkle Brush. That's all it is. It's EP part Sparkle Brush. And then it has a, uh, I believe this is a, not a quarter ounce um, lead eye, but you can put it, you can tie it with any size lead eye or a bead eye or a bead chain eye. Um, it gets down relatively quick, has a ton of movement in the water. This is much, much, much easier and tying deer hair with rabbit and different EP sparkle brush wraps in the back um, to try to get that that profile of the head. This fly takes around 15-20 minutes. This fly, two materials including the lead eyes, uh, takes around a minute and a half. Um, and same thing with like redfish flies when it comes to crustaceans like shrimp and crabs. So you have an EP style crab pattern. They look great. They fish great. These flies take around 15 minutes to tie. This is a variant of a quan. And instead of stacking brush in the front, you can just tie it with a rabbit strip. These take about a minute and a half to tie. Um, all it is is polar fiber, a couple silly legs, some sparkle flash, and some rabbit strips tied over. Um, so this is just some of the things that you're going to experience in this series. It's how to tie flies that are extremely effective that at the same time are extremely easy to tie. Uh, the reason why we're doing this series is we get a lot of questions on the water through our guide service of what flies should we carry on trips or what flies should we start tying. And what we wanna try to do is just simplify 
those questions that that we receive um, into a manner of these are these are flies that we carry in our box that we tie on for clients um, that we tie the night before or a couple weeks in advance that are a easy to tie um, don't take a ton of time or materials uh, and also are just simply productive so hope you enjoy the series leave comments below All right, so grab your boxes, grab your vise, and get ready to learn how to tie a bunch of guide flies because we're gonna be providing a ton of different content uh, to you all so you can fill your boxes for this upcoming fall and spring season. Um, if you wanna follow us on other channels or book a guide trip here in North Carolina, our website is smoothangler.com uh, and our Instagram handle is just at smoothangler. Uh, we look forward to A, teaching you guys about guide flies, how to tie them, uh, other fishing content which is on our website and a different YouTube series coming up. Uh, and then three, just look for daily posts on our Instagram. So look forward to being with you guys and the viewers and the supporters over the next couple of years. Um, stay smooth.